What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, in this one we're going to be painting up the new Canoptic Reanimator. Uh, you might notice here that mine looks slightly different to yours. <laughs> That's because I've built it up in sub-assemblies. So I've got the other sort of two halves just um, sort of pinned on some painting handles here. The main reason for doing that is that I think it's going to be quite difficult to access uh, these sort of inner bits and sort of painting um, the orbs and stuff on, on these if we fully assemble the model, so I've just kept it separate for for the time being. Um, as always, I have primed everything up beforehand, so that's a base coat of uh, spray Chaos Black, followed by spray of Lead Belcher just to get a nice smooth metallic finish on, on these. Um, and again, we're just going to be beginning with a wash of Nelne Oil. Now, uh, it doesn't have to be neat here, just want to make sure you get a nice Nice smooth finish of uh, nano oil all over the all over the miniature here, and just watch out for pulling as as usual. And you want to do that for all the pieces. So uh, once I've done that and everything's dry, uh, we'll progress with the next step. Now that our nano oil wash is dry, it's time to start brightening the metal back up and uh, starting the highlighting process as well. And to do that, we're going to be using the uh, Necron Compound Dry Brush Paint. So I'm just uh, getting some of my brush here and then wiping the majority of it off. That is the nature of dry brushing. And then I'm just going to sort of start running the brush uh, across the miniature, sort of like this gently, in order to start sort of catching the raised areas. You can sort of see it's starting to catch that already. I'm just going to go around the entire miniature, sort of catching all the metal work uh, with this Necron compound to start sort of bringing in the highlights and lightening that metal back up again. And I will be back with the next step once I've done that. With our Necron compound dry brush done, you can see it's all lighted up the metal and giving it a bit of a highlight. I'm going to move on now to painting in the cables. Now I'm going to be sort of mixing them up between black cables and green cables. I'll show you how to do both. But I'm going to start off with painting uh, a few of the cables green. Now this is just down to personal preference. Um, I'm just going to sort of paint the ones I want green in and then sort of show you what I've done and then paint the ones that I want black in and show you what I've done and it's up to you whether you want to follow that or um, sort of take it your own tangent at um, this particular point in time with the cables but for my green cables I'm going to be starting off with a base coat of Caliban green so uh, if you're wanting to paint some of your cables green then I'd recommend you do the same. Um, I'm going to be applying a few thin thin layers of Caliban green to uh, to some of these cables. It might take a couple of thin coats just to get a solid solid coat down. And uh, what I'll do is I'll get this all painted in and I'll be back when I'm done. Those are the Caliban green cables painted in just for reference. Just let you have a look at that. And on uh, these chaps we've got the two cables and then the one under the uh, sort of orb there as well. Right now we're going to highlight those green cables and to start off we're going to be using our warpstone glow. So I'm just preparing some on the side here. Got some thin down warpstone glow. And as for most of the green cables when we highlight them we're just going to sort of be trying to accentuate where the light would normally normally catch the cables. So for example on these ones down here, it's just going to be just sort of catching the, the side here. Just sort of painting in a thin line, sort of tend to make it a bit thicker near the top. And then just painting that thin line in there like that. I'll just do that for the other side. And then I'll repeat that for all the green cables I've done so far. And uh, I'll be back once I've done that. This green highlight's now done. It's time to do the final green highlight on the cables. And for that, we're going to be using Moot Green. Uh, this is just to sort of catch where. I think the light would be hitting the cables the most just to make them stand out a bit more. So I've got a bit of moot green thinned down on my brush and it's just pretty much areas like uh, right at the top here. I'm going to be wanting to sort of try and stay within the original highlight. Just apply a bit of, sort of moot green at the top there just to make sort of the cable look as though it's brightest at the top and then again on this side. Trying to stay within the original line. Find the highlight. I'm just going to go around and do that for all the cables on the other parts as well and then I'll be back with the next step. 
with the green highlights applied, that's the green cables done. So now I'm going to move on to painting the black cables. That's going to be all these cables that um, I haven't hit with the hit with the green around the miniature. Uh, to do that, you can use thin down the bed in black, uh, black templar. I'm using black templar just because that uh, is what I found first. But let's say thin down the bed in black would work just fine. So it's just going to be a case of uh, going in and blocking in the blocking in the black. Trying to avoid the uh, the green cables as best as you can. You don't want to sort of ruin any of the hard work you've done there. So just uh, go around your miniature, block in your black detail, black cables, and then once I've done that, I'll be back with the next step. With that black cabling now blocked in, it's time to start highlighting. Uh, first color we're going to be using for that is Mechanicus Standard Gray. Uh, exactly the same principles here as the green cables. It's just sort of uh, highlighting where we think the light would be catching the cable. So I'm just loading up my brush with a bit of thin down Mechanica Standard Gray, and then it's just going to be a case of um, being neat and sort of just going around with your black areas and applying it where you think the light would catch the most. Just uh, take your time with it. I'll try not to sort of get it on any of the metal work or the green cables you've already done, and you should be good. Uh, I'll be back once I've done this with the next step. With the Mechanica standard grey highlights done, it's now time to apply the last highlight to the black areas, uh, again much like we did with the moot green, but this time we'll be using uh, Dawnstone. So I've just got some thinned down Dawnstone to the side here, just loading up my brush. And as I say, much like the moot green, it's just going to be a case of um, sort of catching where you think the light will be catching the most, just sort of like on this raised bit of the pipe here. Just trying to stay within your uh, previous mechanic mechanica standard grey highlight. Uh, then sort of at the top here. Uh, and getting the same with these cables. And I'll just go around all the miniature doing that. And then I'll be back with the next step once that's done. With our Dawnstone highlights done, the black cabling is finished too. So the next thing we're going to do is just sort of some of the gold detailing. I believe the only gold detailing on this um, is just going to be the sort of decorative element on the top here. So in order to uh, in order to paint that, we're just going to be using some Liberator gold, um, just sort of putting some on my brush here, and removing most of it. Um, you're just going to use the sort of edge of your brush just to catch the uh, catch the detail here with uh, Liberator Gold. A bit awkward on camera, but you get the idea. Just sort of delicate. It might sort of require a few delicate coats of the Liberator Gold just to sort of catch it. But I'll do that. Uh, on the side and on the other side, and then I'll be back with the next step. Next step is to paint up the face of our reanimator, and to do that, we'll be using Rune Lord Brass. So I've just got a damp brush here, putting some of the paint on my on my brush, and it's just going to be pasting in. So I'm trying to leave the recesses as dark as possible. So you want to do sort of the front, around the sides, and as much around the around the back there as you can. Uh, just without getting any of this on any of the cables you've already painted in and the metal work that we've already completed. So uh, I'll possibly do two thin coats of this just to get a nice solid colour. And then I'll be back with the uh, with the next step. With the face painted in, it's time to shade that. Uh, and we'll be using Cryptic Armour Shade Gloss. Uh, it should add a nice warmth to the colour and sort of uh, apply the shading that we want in the miniature. Now a little of this paint goes quite a long way, I find. Um, and you'll also want to watch out for pooling. Um, so you'll just want to sort of be as neat as possible, just apply the shade as you go, drawing your brush off any of the corners or the edges to sort of uh, avoid that pooling. And just work your way around the miniature, just sort of applying the shade as required. So I'll just get that round, being careful for pooling. Um, and then I'll be back with the next step. With the Cryptic Armour Shade Gloss now dry on the face, it's time to start highlighting up the face. So we're going to be using the Canoptic Alloy uh, paint for this. And we're just going to be pretty much edge highlighting. 
Um, there's lots of nice sharp corners on the face here for us to catch. So just like round the eye, just sort of use the edge of your brush and just sort of catch the that sharp ridge around there. And then there are loads of sharp ridges sort of around the top here and around the sides. So just go around the miniature or around the face, catching all these edges, sharp corners with your Canoptic alloy. And then uh, I'll be back with the next step once we've done this. With the face done, it's now time to start preparing the miniature for our green glow. Uh, and to do that, we'll be using a Thuran Grey. Um, and you'll just be wanting to apply it to all the areas where we want to then apply our green glow later on. So that'll be the eye lens, this little lens on the top here, uh, all your orbs, all these central bits here. Uh, I'll possibly put some in this bit here. And then uh, I think there's only the one thing on, on these leg bits, and that will be uh, this orb here. So I've got some thinned down author and grey just to the side here. And it's just going to be a process of carefully going around your miniature, being neat, and applying a couple of thin coats of this to get a nice smooth, uh, nice smooth finish where we want to put our orbs. So just being as neat as you can. Letting this area dry and then coming back to it to ensure we get a nice solid colour. Oops, sorry about that. Um, same with the eye. So just loading up my brush again. So same with the eye. Just going to be a case of blocking that in, letting it dry, coming back to it. So you get a nice smooth finish. And I'll just do that with all the orbs uh, and then I'll be back so we can move on to the next step. Now we've got Arthur and Grey all based in, it's time to actually start painting in the glow. And to do that we'll be using the technical paint from Games Workshop called Tesseract Glow. Uh, a little of this paint goes a long way I find, so um, don't sort of flood the area you're painting in. And it's just going to be a case of going around the miniature and picking out all those areas that you painted with the tesseract glow, uh, painted with the ethereum gray, I mean. And then when you come to doing the end, sort of bigger orbs, just uh, paint them in and then just watch out for pooling. And so uh, that can give a bit of a, a mottled effect to your, your glow finish. So I'm just sort of working around the orb, sort of watching out for any pooling. And that comes out right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the rest of the miniature painting and all the other orbs and then uh, I will be back with the next step once that's done. With the orbs painted and I'll reanimate now, uh, I'm wanting to try and apply a bit of a glow effect. So to do that we'll be sticking with our Tesseract Glow. Uh, you don't need an awful lot at all here. It's just going to be a very subtle effect. And uh, to do that or to achieve the effect, I'm just going to sort of put very little Tesseract Glow on our brush and then just sort of drag the paint towards the eye or towards the orb that you're sort of applying the glow effect to. And then once this is done, it should give the illusion that uh, the orb is actually glowing. So I'm just going to do that with all the orbs. And then I'll be back with the next step. Having finished off the glow on the orbs, uh, I'm now going to start working on the base. As you can see, I've also taken the liberty of putting the miniature together now. Now, there are a few details on the face here that are quite interesting. Uh, we've got some masonry work. Uh, we've got sort of the wreck of a bit of a, a Mechanicus Walker. I forget the name of them now. What I'm going to do for mine is I'm going to paint uh, these sections uh, red because I've got a friend that collects Mechanicus and he paints his red, so I thought that'd be a bit funny. <laughs> um, and uh, the red I'll be using is Mephiston red. So I'm just gonna base uh, the hand bit here and the back uh, back section here in Mephiston red. Uh, and I will show you what that looks like when it's done. So well, you'll possibly wanna do a couple of thin coats of this, this paint to avoid it going gloopy or streaky. Um, especially as uh, the metallic works quite dark here. Try to avoid these sort of recesses in the fingers. Um, but otherwise, a couple of thin coats of Mr. Fist and Red, and uh, we should be good. So I'll be back once I've finished that. 
with amethyst and red based in, I'm just going to paint the masonry up using Shabti Bone. So it's going to be areas such as uh, this bit here. Uh, there's a little rock there, um, and then there's some sort of masonry bits tucked in underneath this uh, construction beam here as well. Um, I will possibly hit the skulls with uh, Ushabiti Bone at this point as well. You can sort of see one there and one there. So I've just got some Ushabiti Bone thinned down on my palette here. And uh, you'll possibly need a couple of thin coats of this to get a nice, uh, nice smooth finish. So uh, I'll just get that done and then I'll be back with the next step. With our Ushabiti Bone and Mephiston Red base coats now down, uh, we're just going to highlight the whole base of the miniature now, including the metal work and stuff like that, with Agrax Earthshade. This is to try and give it a sort of grimy, dirty, beaten up look. Uh, as it's been trampled over by our reanimator. So uh, a very simple step this, just sort of go over the entire miniature with Agrax Earthshade. Uh, try and keep it sort of a thin-ish coat, but we still want enough to sit in the recess details and stuff like that. So um, yeah, fairly simple step this, and uh, I'll be back when we're ready to move on. With the Agrax Earthshade washing our drying, it's time to start highlighting up some of these colors. Uh, I'm gonna start with the red. Uh, for that, I'll be using Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, it'll just be a very uh, quick edge highlight, uh, so I don't need to be too neat with it, um, but it's will try and be as neat as you can, uh, just to make the red pop a bit. So we're going to start off with that. So I've got some Evil Sun Scarlet just thinned down to the side here. And uh, it's just going to be a case of... Um, I mean, there's some sharper corners there, so just... It might look quite stark to begin with, but this paint does dry. Um, bit lighter. So we don't make the red pop too much because we don't want to draw attention away from the rest of the model. But we still want it to look look good. So I'm just going to go around and catch all these highlights uh, and then I'll be back with the next step. With the Evil Sun Scarlet highlights now done in red, I'm just nipping back quickly to my lead belcher just to neaten up some of the metal work. Uh, for example just to bring a bit of shine back out on these metal pieces, uh, do a bit of highlighting uh, just on this area here, and also to uh, pick out the the scarabs, which are here and here, which have been dealt down by our um, uh, Agrax Earthshade wash. So uh, it should be a quick-ish step, this shouldn't take too long. Uh, just sort of a bit of uh, lead belcher on the brush there. I'm just doing straight out the pot at this point, and uh, just to sort of Bring a bit of shine back to these areas here, and uh, I'll do a bit of sort of highlighting around around this bit, and possibly stick some lead belcher on the on the rivets on the hand here as well. So uh, I'll just go around and do that, and then I'll be back with the next step. I finished highlighting up all the metal bits now, and I also took the liberty of painting in the. Um, the glowy bits on the scarabs in exactly the same manner as we painted the orbs. Uh, I didn't think you guys needed to see that again. So now it's time to highlight the masonry work and to do that I've just got some screaming skull. I'm going to be dry brushing this on, just removing some of the paint from my brush at the moment. So the dry brush will be exactly the same as we did with the, uh, the metal work earlier but just focusing on the masonry, just sort of brushing that brushing it on, catching the edges, trying to be careful of the um, red and the silvers that we've already already finished, but don't worry if you get a little bit on there because it will just look like uh, dust from the masonry or whatever sort of got onto the, um, got onto the other bits. So I'm just going to go around and gently dry brush uh, the highlights onto the uh, the base and uh, then we'll pretty much be done with the highlights now dry brushed into the masonry uh, that's the base done um, aside from doing what you'd normally do with your bases uh, I am now going to just disappear off quickly and uh, get the rest of this base finished off as I do with the rest of my neck runs uh, there'll be a link in the description and just up above there as to how I do my bases if you want to check that out um, but I'll be back in a bit to show you the finished product there we go, I've just finished off the base like uh, I based the rest of my Necrons and uh, having done that, now our reanimator is is finished. 
Um, I'm fairly pleased with how he's turned out. Um, it's not looking too bad. Those green orbs are, are not too bad considering the amount of time they they take. Uh, well, I hope you found this uh, this guide useful. And uh, if you're going to be interested in watching any of my other tutorials, there is uh, quite a few on the channel now. Um, I'm going to be finishing off the rest of the Indomitus box and then painting up some of the other new Necron miniatures as well. So if you're interested in seeing those, um, then I uh, appreciate if you give the channel a subscription. And uh, until next time, guys, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.